You, will you yield? Oh, I'll yield. Yes, please. Yeah, I was when I was in 11th grade and Joe Biden made our schools gun-free school zones, one of the students in my school brought three guns to school and our entire school went on lockdown because he was the only person with a gun. For the record, when Marjorie Taylor Greene was in 11th grade, George H.W. Bush was president, not Joe Biden. President Bush 41 signed into law the Gun-Free School Zones Act of 1990. It passed the Senate by a voice vote. The House passed the law by a vote of 313 to 1. Now, despite what Marjorie Taylor Greene might have you believe, Joe Biden has not been the president for 33 years. At the time the law was signed, Biden was a senator. Green is also lying about the timeline of all of this. The incident at her school happened on September 6, 1990. The bill was not even introduced in the Senate until October 27, 1990. It was signed into law November 29, 1990, three months after the incident at Green's school. Still, Green has lied about all of this repeatedly. And never mind Congress, last year, Green delivered the Whopper on Fox News with the help of Tucker Carlson. She was 16 years old. Marjorie Taylor Greene, a member of Congress from Georgia, was trapped in her high school when a student showed up with firearms to commit a mass shooting. It was the worst thing that could have happened to any of us, and it was terrifying. There was no adult there with a gun in our school because our schools had turned into gun-free zones. This is because yes. of Joe Biden and the crime bill that they passed back in 1990. Green has also lied about the sequence as a witness in congressional hearings. I want to share something with you. Uh, when I, in 1990, when I was in high school and our schools became gun-free school zones, another student at my school brought guns to school, into our school, and our school went on lockdown. Now, to be fair, that lockdown at Green's school did happen. And perhaps Green's high school declared itself as a gun-free zone before Congress took any legislative action. There were a few schools across the United States in the late 1980s that took action on their own and instituted a gun-free policy before Congress took up the issue. But remember, Green attended high school in a very conservative part of rural Georgia where they loved their guns. And there was every indication the school did not become a gun-free zone until after Congress passed the law. And that was three months after the school lockdown and shooting threat that Green mentions. Anyway, honesty and credibility have never been calling cards for Marjorie Taylor Greene. And on the gun issue in particular, it was not that long ago when Greene was running for Congress and claimed the mass shooting in Las Vegas that killed 60 people, the deadliest shooting in U.S. history, was perpetrated by the U.S. government. I don't believe Stephen Paddock was a lone wolf. I don't believe that he pulled this off all by himself, and I know most of you don't either. So I am really wondering if there is a, there's a bigger motive there, and does it have to do with the Second Amendment? Because what's the best way to control the people? You have to take away their guns. By the way, Democrats do not want to take away all guns. Democrats and a lot of Republicans want to take away assault weapons. That happened for 10 years starting in the Clinton administration. And during that decade when assault weapons were banned, mass shootings went down. Then the Bush 43 administration let the ban expire and mass shootings have been rising ever since. Those are facts that are inconvenient for many gun nuts like Marjorie Taylor Greene. She can whine all she wants about soft targets and gun-free zones somehow being responsible for mass shootings and perhaps blaming Joe Biden for something nearly all of Congress supported 33 years ago is good politics. After all, a lot of Green supporters are not terribly bright. But remember, Marjorie Taylor Greene would not know the truth or be willing to tell it if it bit her on her derriere. Seriously. By the way, Green's best frenemy in Congress, Lauren Boebert, the Colorado House Republican, recently got destroyed on the House floor by progressive Democrat Jamie Raskin. Who decides? What is true or false? I certainly don't trust the federal government to make that distinct distinction. We have an entire political party which is organizing itself around this radical moral agnosticism, claiming that there's no way we can know the difference between whether an election is on Tuesday or whether an election is on Thursday. Check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.